Hey, I'm Zach and I made this thing called Nobbler. And in this video, I wanted to do a run through of all the features of Nobbler step by step. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is add Nobbler to your live set. If you need instructions on how to download and install it and set it up, I've got another video that I just recorded for that and I'll put a link to it in the description. But from here, we're going to assume that you've got Nobbler set up and configured and ready to go. So we've added it to the live set. It's here. Um, no Nobbler to be found because we haven't started it on the iPad yet. So I'm going to start the app and go to the setup page. Uh, it remembered my connection from last time, but I'll rescan the network in the device here. Um, it's found the iPad app and it's set it up here. And so we can see if it's working by going to the blue hand tab and go to different tracks and we see the display updating. And so let's, let's start there. So we're going to start at the blue hand tab. And what is blue hand? Blue hand is a reference to this blue hand icon that shows up in device title bars when you have a control service configured and that turns on certain features of Ableton Live that Nobbler takes advantage of. And so the purpose of blue hand is to show you all the parameters in the currently selected device. And so as I go to different tracks, we see the color of those sliders update to the track color and every parameter in this device is available in these sliders. And the parameters are collected into banks. A lot of the stock devices, let's say operator, have their parameters collected into named banks and those are all accessible right here. Push of a button. And so you can use blue hand to change any parameter of the currently selected device. And now the whole point of making Nobbler originally was I wanted a way to collect parameters from various devices onto one page here. And we've got two of those pages of the Nobbler 1 and Nobbler 2 pages. And so there's a couple of ways to get parameters onto these pages. And the first one I'll show you from Blue Hand. And so what we can do is tap any parameter name on Blue Hand here. So let's say the uh, OSC B level here. You get this green outline, you go to a Nobbler tab, then you tap an unassigned slider, and there you go. And now um, that slider is changing that OSC B level in this operator device. So that's how you do it. You tap a parameter name, you go to a Nobbler page, you tap an unassigned parameter, and there you go. You're all set. The other way to map Nobbler knobs is to click the parameter in the live UI. And when you click a parameter in the UI, it gets these little corners around it. So that's the currently selected parameter is the one with the corners highlighted. And then you just have to tap an unassigned slider on Nobbler and now it's assigned. And so I can do that maybe in other devices here. I'll click ratio, now I'll tap it on the screen. I'll click the threshold and I'll tap it on the screen. And now I can adjust um, all of all of these things from these different devices on these different tracks all at the same time. And that's the value of the Nobbler pages is it gives you this very song specific control surface. All of these knob mappings are saved with the live set. So you can work on a bunch of different songs and their custom layout is always loaded with the song. Another thing that has been present on both the blue hand and the Nobbler pages here is this row of small buttons up top. And these are device shortcut buttons. And what they let you do is from the selected device, all you have to do is tap an unassigned button. And now you can instantly jump back no matter where you are in your live set. So I'll, I'll map this operator to one button and this compressor to another. So I just tap compressor, now I'm back there. I tap operator, now I'm back there. You can use this in conjunction with racks to have a really effective way to jump around and have very relevant parameters on the screen. So in this example, I've got a kick drum rack that I created. It has 15 parameters mapped right now. Um, and then I can just make a shortcut to that kick drum. The 15 most important parameters of this instrument are defined by the rack itself. And now I can just jump to my kick drum and I have my most important parameters from this very you know deep depth of racks that is uh, creating this instrument. And we can see on this OSC1 position parameter here, so I, I've got this wavetable uh, device selected, uh, OSC1 position, you see the green dot in Ableton Live showing that this 
parameter is currently mapped to a macro knob in a rack. And Ableton uses this green dot to show us there. We can, for instance, record some automation. I'll just do that here. Let's just pick this one. And I'll record moving this. You can see I've got the red dot here showing that this parameter is automated, just like the red dot that shows up in Ableton. And we see that knob moving just as I recorded it. Um, and it's also moving on the screen here perfectly in unison. If I touch this value, the same thing happens as if I touched it on the screen. That red turns gray. Now I've overridden the automation. And the re-enable automation button has illuminated in the Nobbler toolbar just as it has in the Live toolbar. And so I can tap that and re-enable the automation there. So that's showing the automation state or mapping state of the Nobbler sliders here. So now we've looked at mapping sliders and also mapping device shortcuts. Well, what about unmapping? Because uh, maybe we want to change things around. And that's what this button in the toolbar is, unmapping. So on Nobbler pages, you can unmap any of the sliders. Nobbler and Blue Hand display the device shortcuts here. Um, and so all you have to do is go into unmapping mode and then tap what you want to unmap, including devices too. Okay, so that's Blue Hand and Nobbler and device shortcut buttons. Those were all present in the prior non-native version of the Nobbler app. Uh, the big additions to this app are this track navigation that you can slide in from the side. So track and device navigation. So um, I can bounce around to the, to the different tracks, including return tracks, including the main track in my live set. Um, I can dive through groups. This side chain one is a group. And also I can dig through racks. So inside of this track called Kick, I've got a rack called ZS Kick 2. I can tap on that and see its chains. I'll tap on the chain. Now here are all the devices in that chain. Um, here's another rack that's a device in that chain called Inner, and it has two chains, uh, Attack and Sustain. And so you can see how easy it is to just uh, very quickly drill through your live set and adjust what you're looking to adjust here on the screen without having to use the mouse and hunt around and find different things on the screen. So that's the navigation. You can swipe that in and out. You can also use this button here on the toolbar to toggle it in and out. Similarly, on the left side, you've got mixer controls. And so right here, you see I'm adjusting the volume. Um, I'm adjusting the sends here, uh, the pan position, the mute state, the solo state. Um, if I go to this track, um, I can toggle the record state. And also you can see I can choose the crossfader settings, the A and B here. And if I go to the main track, that AB toggle turns into the actual crossfader control. And you can see that moving on the screen there too. So the last thing to cover is the toolbar here. So we've already looked at, this is a way to toggle the mixer along with swiping it in and out. Uh, that's refresh. Sometimes things can get out of sync over here. Uh, refresh clears that up. This we've already looked at is unmapping mode. We've got tap tempo, a tempo number. You can tap on here and type in a new tempo value and it updates in live. Uh, this is a metronome toggle, play, stop, record. This is MIDI overdub mode, automation re-enable, capture MIDI the world's most underrated feature. Uh, noodle around on your MIDI keyboard and then tap that and the magic is captured. This is called Session Automation Record. So this is what we used earlier to record that automation on that knob. This is loop, loop control here. This last one I added, it's for arrangement view. If you have some locators set, so let's add a locator here and let's add a locator here. Uh, these two buttons allow you to, it's kind of difficult to see on the screen, but there's a little uh, teal triangle that's going from the beginning of the song to number one to number two um, as I'm tapping through these previous and next buttons here. And then there's the button to show and hide the navigation, which you can also swipe in and out from the side. Okay, well, that's it for Nobbler. Thanks for checking it out. I'm happy to answer any questions you've got. Uh, just put it in a comment or send me an email. My email is easy to find. But otherwise, happy Noblin. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.